WGEM's Mackenzie Henderson joining us live tonight. Uh, not far from there outside the welcome in Mackenzie. That move out process uh, has been going on, still going on tonight. Yes, it's actually been going on for nine hours. It's been nine hours since the city sent in police, city inspectors and social services agencies to tell the people living here at the Welcome Inn that they needed to leave actually for their own safety. So police and inspectors came by. They put up red signs on the doors and they started knocking on the doors around nine in the morning. And Michael Seaver, he is the head of inspection and enforcement in Quincy. And he says actually the balcony and the stairwells, they are the problem. They are just not safe. He says firefighters noticed the problems with those areas during an inspection in January. So city officials say the owners, Quincy Properties LLC, they are based out of Blue Springs, Missouri. They said back in February that they would make some improvements. However, when city inspectors went back into the property for a complaint driven inspection on July 15th, they noticed there was actually more damage. And then after getting an inspection from a Hannibal company, the city decided to close the property. Our objective today is just to remove people from it for their own safety. Uh, we'll proceed from there if the owner should choose to make the repairs. I think it is, uh, the structure is repairable, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to require quite a bit of time in terms of planning and design. And Seaver says the owners need to show a reasonable plan to improve the property and get another inspection from a structural engineer before they can get approval to allow people back inside. So WGEM's Rebecca Duffy has been speaking with tenants all day. So it's been a very stressful day, a very hot day to be moving out all of a sudden. So what have tenants been telling you? That's right, Mackenzie. Many tenants were devastated that they were given less than 24 hours to vacate from the property today. And although there are temporary housing options available, many are still scrambling to find more permanent ones. I've been a resident here about three months and it's been stressful trying to find other places to go. Gerard Perkins became overwhelmed when he and his family were forced to leave their apartment at the Welcome Inn today. Perkins says he had heard rumors about maybe having to leave, but he was shocked to be kicked out today with no notice. But he said he was going to close, but anything is going to happen this quick. So I'm like, OK, why didn't y'all say something, you know, before you know this is going to happen? And Resident Mark Williams says he asked workers at the inn just yesterday if he was losing his housing, and they told him no. That, that's all rumors that, you know, it's not true. Both Perkins and Williams don't have permanent housing options and are unsure of where they will go next. Williams just wishes the owner of the Welcome Inn and the city gave residents a much earlier and more honest notice. It's breaking my heart what they're doing to people, man. There ain't no place to go. Mackenzie Perkins told me that he was actually at work when he received a phone call that this was happening and that he needed to come home to deal with this. Oh my gosh, just a devastating situation for everybody involved. So some of the people who had to move out are actually in temporary shelters tonight. And one of those shelters is set up at 1016 Vermont Street and WGEM's Blake Salmon is live there tonight to tell us more. Blake. Now, Mackenzie, while this area of the shelter is deserted right now, it certainly wasn't the case earlier. Today, it was full of agencies looking to help people. Agencies like the Salvation Army's Disaster Services over here. There's Transitions of West Central Illinois back here. Preferred Family Health Care, Region of Office of Education Number 1, Quincy YMCA, and Quinata. Now, these, uh, uh, these services all offer different things. One of the things they did offer was rent assistance, also help finding a, a more permanent residence, also help buying food, hygiene services, as well as hygiene services. Now, those being helped or taking advantage of this help say it was much needed. The services were actually pretty helpful. Uh, they gave me a gift card to Walmart just in case if I needed anything. They offered to try to help me get some kind of assistance, but uh, luckily I was able to find somewhere that I could stay for a week without having to be at the shelter. Now, officials from United Way say all those agencies will be back out here tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. Now, if you at home are looking to help out here, the United Way says there are a few ways you can do that. They say monetary donations donations are always appreciated. They're also looking for volunteers to help at the shelter here in the evenings. If you are interested in doing that, they say please contact the Salvation Army. Live in Quincy, I'm Blake Salmon, WGEM News.
All right, thank you so much, Blake. And United Way officials say if you still need a place to stay tonight, you can go to that shelter. They have not reached capacity. So I am joined again by Mayor Mike Trope of Quincy. Mayor, where do we go from here? Well, our shelter is open to take more residents uh, through 8 o'clock tonight, and then they're closed for the evening, keep the residents that are there overnight, and then tomorrow morning it will reopen, and we'll also have the social service agencies back to help more people that uh, need to find either permanent or this uh, temporary shelter uh, you know, for this week. And then when it comes to low-income housing, is Quincy prepared to absorb the housing needs of this many people? And if not, what are we going to do about that? Yeah, we, Quincy has a housing issue, period, not only for the transitional housing, but also for the skilled workers that we expect to attract and move to Quincy. So all of our housing, we need more condos built, we need more uh, single family homes. We do need transitional housing. So there's a variety of uh, housing that Quincy still needs. Do you have a plan to do that or are you going to work on that? We have been working. We've got um, a rental rehab program that we're uh, revitalizing and hope to bring to the city council you know, in the next 30 days or so for their approval. Uh, we're working with other developers on different properties. Oh, well, we've got one across the street that they're talking about putting 11 apartments in there and condos on the top floor. That'd be uh, extremely exciting for the community. Uh, there's other developers uh, that we're talking to. So there's a lot of discussion, but not too many groundbreaking, uh, you know, facilities at this point. And are there any other properties like the Welcome Inn that you're looking at currently in Quincy to be shutting down? Nothing at this large. This is, uh, I believe, the, the largest facility of its kind that has gone through the structural review that uh, became unsafe uh, and we needed to uh, shut it down. I don't know of any other facility this close with the number of tenants in it uh, that compares to it. So how long do you think it will take to get the Welcome Inn back up and running? You know, I don't know. They, they've they been working on it since January, and they had their report in March. They haven't accomplished a whole lot from, you know, March, April, May, or June, or July. So I don't know what their plans are. Uh, now that they know we're really serious about it, hopefully we can sit down and have a conversation and learn. Uh, worst case, they will uh, shut it down completely and look to sell it, but I, I don't know what their plans are. What about a comparable replacement facility? How long would something like that take to put in place? Well, anything that if you had to build ground up will be a minimum of 12 months. So there's no quick solution here. Uh, we were able to house several people today from the Welcome Inn into other longer term facilities, uh, but it's probably less than a dozen that we've been able to put into that category. And we've got a little over 30 people in the shelter tonight already. So I don't know where the other people have gone. We know there's still some people spending the night in uh, the Welcome Inn tonight. Uh, we're gonna be working with them again tonight and tomorrow to uh, move them out and have them go into one of our shelters. And then seven days from now when the temporary shelters are no more, where do these people go? We hope that our service agencies are able to place people uh, during the next, you know, six, seven days in more permanent housing. And you've been here in Quincy your whole life. Have you ever seen something on this scale? Uh, no, I, I really haven't. Not, not in this community. Quincy's a great, caring community. You can just tell by the various social services that were able to come together this last week and provide these services. They do it with a smile. They're, you know, they're trying to help everybody that comes in the door. Quincy's really lucky to have the variety and the experience uh, in the social service area to help in, in crisis like this. And Mayor, what was it like to have to make this kind of decision today? Well, it's something I've been dealing with for over a week. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think everybody has the right to safe housing. And it hurts to see for-profit enterprises think they could take advantage of people. Uh, we have police that tried to go in to check people today. They open up the door. They can't believe uh, the smells, the 
condition of some of those rooms. It's, it's just not acceptable. So we have the structural issues we're dealing with, but before the principals here can get a occupancy permit, they're going to have to meet all minimum housing codes before I'm going to sign off on any occupancy permit. Thank you so much, Mayor, for talking with us today. So, Dylan, of course, there are still a lot of questions and residents may still be waiting for an answer. And coming up, we will check in with one of the organizations that has been helping them all day. But for now, we'll send it back to you. Okay, Mackenzie, thank you. And we will be back right after this.